Hello, thank you for joining me today. Linda Lamp here. We've been reading A Course in Miracles, the main text. And today we're going to continue reading chapter 22, Salvation and the Holy Relationship. And we'll be reading section four, Reason and the Forms of Error. And hang on just a quick second, and we'll get started. Okay. Reason and the forms of error. The introduction of reason into the ego's thought system is the beginning of its undoing. For reason and the ego are contradictory. Nor is it possible for them to coexist in your awareness. For reason's goal is to make plain and therefore obvious, you can see reason. This is not only a play on words, for here is the beginning of a vision that has meaning. Vision is sense quite literally. If it is not the body's sight, it must be understood. For it is plain and what is obvious is not ambiguous it can be understood. And here do reason and ego separate to go their separate ways. The ego's whole continuance depends on its belief you cannot learn its course. Share this belief and reason will make unable to see your errors and make way for, your, for their correction. For reason sees through errors telling you what you thought was not, was real is, what you thought is real was is not. Reason can see the difference between sin and mistakes because it wants correction. Therefore, it tells you what you thought was uncorrectable can be corrected, and thus it must have been an error. The ego's opposition to correction leads to its fixed belief in sin and disregard of errors. It looks on nothing that can be corrected. Thus does the ego damn and reason save. Reason is not salvation in itself, but it makes way for peace and brings you to a state of mind in which salvation can be given you. Sin is a block set like a heavy gate, locked and without a key across the road to peace. No one who looks on it without help of reason would try to pass it. The body's eyes behold it as solid granite, so thick it would be madness to attempt to pass it. Yet reason sees through it easily because it is an error. The form it takes cannot conceal its emptiness from reason's eyes. Only the form of error attracts the ego meaning it does not recognize and does not see it, see if it is there or not. Everything the body's eyes can see is a mistake, an error in perception, a distorted fragment of the whole without the meaning that the whole would give. And yet mistakes, regardless of their form, can be corrected. Sin is but error in a special form the ego venerates. It would preserve all errors and make them sins. For here is its own stability, its heavy anchor, and in the shifting world it made, the rock on which its church is built, and where its worshipers are bound to bodies, believing the body's freedom is their own. Reason will tell you that the form of error is not what makes it a mistake. If what the form conceals is a mistake, the form cannot prevent correction. The body's eyes see only form. They cannot see what they were made to see. And they were made to look on error and not see past it. Theirs is indeed a strange perception, for they can see only illusions, unable to look beyond the granite block of sin. 
and stopping at the outside form of nothing. To this distorted form of vision, the outside of everything, the wall that stands between you and the truth, is wholly true. Yet how can sight that stops at nothingness, as if it were solid wall, see truly? It is held back by form, having been made to guarantee that nothing else but form will be perceived. These eyes, made not to see, will never see. For the idea they represent left, not its maker, uh, I, this is a difficult sentence, for the idea they represent left not its maker, and it is their maker that sees through them. What was its maker's goal, but not to see? For this, the body's eyes are perfect means, but not for seeing. See how the body's eyes rest on externals and cannot go beyond. Watch how they stop at nothingness, unable to go beyond the form to meaning. Nothing so blinding as perception of form. For sight of form means nothing. I'm sorry, for sight of form means understanding has been obscured. Only mistakes have different forms, so, and so they deceive. You can change form because it is not true. It could, it could not be reality because it can be changed. Reason will tell you that if form is not reality, it must be an illusion and is not there to see. And if you see, if you see it, you must be mistaken for you are seeing what cannot be real as if it were. What cannot, what cannot see beyond what is not there must be distorted perception and must perceive illusions as the truth. Could it then recognize the truth? You let not the form of his mistakes keep you from him whose holiness is yours. Let not the vision of his holiness, the sight of which would show you your forgiveness be kept from you by what the body's eyes can see. Let your awareness of your brother not be blocked by your perception of his sins and of his body. What is there in him that you would attack except what you associate with his body, which you believe can sin? Beyond his errors is his holiness and your salvation. You gave him not his holiness, but tried to see your sins in him to save yourself. And yet his holiness is your forgiveness. Can you be saved by making sinful the one whose holiness is your salvation? A holy relationship, however newly born, must value holiness above all else. Unholy values will produce confusion and, and in awareness. I really think that's supposed to be unawareness. Unholy values will produce confusion and unawareness. In an unholy relationship, each one is valued because he seems to justify the other's sin. Each sees within the other what impels him to sin against his will. And thus he lays his sins upon the other and is attracted to him to perpetuate his sins. And so it must become impossible for each to see himself as causing sin by his desire to have sin real. Yet reason sees a holy relationship as what it is, a common state of mind where both give errors gladly to correction that both may happily be healed as one. 
Well, this is a very difficult uh, section, I think, to, to absorb. Um, and part of it is that what we, what we have to remember here is this chapter is talking about how actually our eyes, our physical eyes, do not see what's real. Right? We only see a very little of what actually exists. Um, I write about that in my book, Walking Through Your Walls. Uh, so the body's eyes see only form. They cannot see beyond what they were made to see. And they were made to look on error and not see past it. I, I, I um, uh, let's read the next sentence. Theirs is indeed a strange perception for they can see only illusions, unable to look beyond the granite block of sin and stopping at the outside form of nothing. To this distorted form of vision, the outside of everything, the wall that stands between you and the truth is wholly true. Yet how can sight that stops at nothing as if it were a solid wall see truly? It is held back by form, having been made to guarantee that nothing else but form will be perceived. These eyes made not to see will never see. Very difficult uh, uh, concepts here to try and wrap our heads around. Um, so if you would like additional support with this uh, section, feel free to uh, text me at 907-351-3003. Um, you can also uh, message me through YouTube or SoundCloud, um, or you can go to my websites, lindalamp.com or lindalamp.shop to find ways to reach me. And until next Sunday, I'll, I'll be back again with the next section of um, chapter 22. I look forward to seeing you then. Thank you again for joining me. Namaste and much love.